And now, confessions number 11. Confessions to walk in love. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 and uh, 4 through 8 says, in the Amplified Version, it says, Love endures long, and it is patient, and it is kind. Love never is envious, nor boils over with jealousy. Is not boastful or vainglorious. Love does not display itself haughtily. I just want to add here, love endures long. How many of us who claim that we have love in us endures long? If it hasn't endured long, check yourself. Is it love or is it lust? Ask yourself that question. Love endures long, my friend. It endures long. And love also, as a part of its enduring long, is patient. What about your patience? Do you snap at the blink of an eye? Are you short, short in conversations, short around other people? Is that exhibiting love? Love endures long and love is patient. So no matter what, you should have patience. Patience, my brother, my sister, my friend, is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Patience, patience, long-suffering, patience. And it should, mean, it should not mean anything to you to have these things. You don't have to think about it for a second. You just have it. If you have the love of God in you, if you have the Spirit of the Lord in you, you should have love in you. Love that endures long. Patience that also endures long. Patience. Yes. Patience to wait. Wait. Don't be so hasty. Don't be so quick to get angry. Be patient. And kind. Patient and kindness. Love endures long, and love is patient, and love is kind. Are you a giver? Love is kind. Love is kind. Check yourself. Are you a giver? You should take pleasure in giving as a child of the living God. It should not be something that you have to think about or worry about, because the Spirit of the Lord in you has given you that desire to be kind, that desire to be patient, that desire to endure along with your love. So check yourself. And if you're lacking these things, don't beat upon yourself for a minute. If you find that you are not sure, ask the Lord to give it to you, to grant it unto you, because you need that. You need that. So truly, let the Lord hear the heartbeat of your heart. Let him see that desire that you have to want to have all the fruits of the Spirit. I, my, I myself personally don't want to have some of it. I want to have all of the fruits of the Spirit. And you should too. Okay? Love never is envious. It does not envy someone else. For what they've been blessed with. No, no, no. If you find that you're doing that, that is not love. Okay? And it doesn't boil over with jealousy. And so as you envy them for what the Lord has blessed them with, jealousy begins to boil over. As you envy them 
for whatever the situation, jealousy begins to boil over. And this is something that we should not have as men and women of God, the spirit of jealousy. And it is a spirit. It's a demonic oppression. And the Bible says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So if you know this truth, or you have any doubt in your mind, go to the throne of grace and ask the Lord, Lord, if there is anything that is in me that is in me that is not of you, that is not like you, I beg you to remove it now in Jesus' name. Call out that spirit of envy, that spirit of jealousy, that spirit of perversion, that spirit of lust, whatever it is. Call those spirits out and command them to leave in the name of Jesus. Because when you admit to it, my friend, it's only then that the Holy Spirit will begin to do its work. You have to say it out of your mouth. Again, the confessions of your mouth. So very important. And so, love is not boastful. Don't be so haughty and proud and brag. It's a spirit of pride. God hates pride. So we need to ask the Lord again to remove it. Command that spirit of the demonic oppression, pride, to go to the pits of hell. And this is a whole other teaching that I need to get into at some other point, but not right now. I'm just telling you, love is not boastful. It is not vainglorious. You don't give yourself the glory. You give God the glory. And love does not display itself haughty, proud. No, that's not love. So we need to know what love is. Once we know what love is, and the Bible tells you, then you can go to the throne of grace and say, Lord, check me, check me. Make me and mold me. Make sure that I have this love in my heart. And if I'm lacking, I beg you to give it to me, please. Give it unto me, Lord. Give it back to me. Give back what the enemy has stolen from me in the name of Jesus. And so it goes on to say here um, that love is not conceited, arrogant, inflated with pride. Love is not rude. Are you rude? It is not rude or unmannerable. It does not act unbecomingly. Love, only God's love, does not insist on its own rights. It's not selfish like that or having its own way. God's love in you allows you, my friend, to share what the Lord has in store for his kingdom share what the Lord has in store for his people, share what the desires of God's heart is. That's love. And so, you know, it goes on. But let us confess, okay? If you would repeat after me. I don't display myself haughty or act proudly. I am not conceited or arrogant or inflated with pride. But I'm humble. I'm not rude or unmannerable, and I do not act unbecomingly. I don't insist on my own rights or my own way. I am not self-seeking or touchy or fretful or resentful. I take no account for evil done to me. I pay no attention to a suffering wrong. I don't rejoice at injustice or unrighteousness. But I rejoice when right and truth prevail. I bear up under anything and everything that comes my way. I am ever ready to believe the best of everyone. My hopes are fadeless under all circumstances. I endure everything without weakening and never fail because love never fails. In the name of Jesus. And that brings us to our conclusion of Let's Talk with Althea Marcine. Until and tomorrow, Lord Jesus, cover your people, lead, guide, and direct them, and let what I've ministered to them here on today be a blessing to them to sustain them 
until we meet again in Jesus' precious name. Be blessed. Merci, nous bien contents qu'on appelle le rage de la télévision.